moves in the lead and Wade Cox gets a monstrous turn at four and hangs on around six. The defending U.S. Pro Tour champion of 95 and 96 puts a mark out there for people to beat. Over to two, really turning two, look at this, out there around three, still in it, can he get four? Oh, outside of four, can he get back to the wakes? Oh, yeah! What a way to end his weekend, four at 41. Our new leader, Jonathan Travers. Five, really close, uh, on to six, holds on to the <laughs> slack, and he is pumped. You are seeing why Bob LaPointe has been a dominant force on the water skiing circuit for well over 15 years. Bob LaPointe wins his fifth world title. Bob will hold on to that title for the next two years. It'll be two years before we have these championships once again. 10.75 metre line now, the gold medal pass, can he make it? That's a good number two, nerves settling down, he's got the threes equal, can he hold on? If he gets the four, he's won it, he's won it, Chris Parrish is the champion, Chris Parrish is the champion. A tremendous effort and the biggest victory of Chris Parrish's career, he knew what he had to do and that is exactly what he had in his Good one there, that looks really good. He's in this, can he get up? He really is, yeah, I think he's going to run it. That's big ski, that's bumpy water too. Yeah, that's big stuff. But what a huge deal for Marcus Brown, man. An American guy winning his home championship. You know, it's a huge deal for him. Hey everybody, we're at the Ridge. This is my home site. It has been for quite a while. And we've, uh, we've never really had a full-blown HO Syndicate team testing session here. And that's what we have this week. We got all the best. Bob LaPointe, Wade Cox, my childhood heroes. We got Will Asher, Benny Stottlebauer, Mateo, CP, Rob Hazelwood. Soundgarden's here. CP, you got this dialed yet? He's been working on uh, getting this ski mounted up, this new test ski. This is like the, the super team of all super teams. Uh, it really is. And, and specifically to talk about the knowledge being passed down. I remember at America's Cup, this was in the year 2000, Bob was coming as a, you know, like a legend now, you know, and he'd sort of gotten back into skiing a bit. And so he calls me up and I was riding a CDX. He goes, hey man, I really like your ski. I want one of those. And so I called up Eddie Roberts and said, hey man, Bob LaPointe wants one of my skis. This is like the biggest honor in the world, man. This is because he was my, he was like a god. I couldn't even talk to Bob when I was a kid, you know? So we sat at Oakley Park up on the, on the shoreline in the grass and we talked about ski design for hours. I always say like we had inherited a ski company because I went to, I got hired to work at HO, but um, a lot of the former group had left. Herb O'Brien had left and... Eddie Roberts had left, and Chris Sullivan had left, and they had built a, well, they had built the biggest ski company in the world. I had to kind of like, I, I wouldn't say fill those shoes, I don't think you can, but I was very fortunate that Wade Cox stayed. Dave's CAD knowledge and his engineering, as, I, as the guys that hired him said, we couldn't even read his resume. So many acronyms and so many accreditations. Wade is a legend. I mean, he was my hero growing up skiing. He has a lot of influence and a lot of pull, and so the first thing we did, or I did, before I even went to Seattle, was I went to Orlando, and we signed Will Asher. And I was his team manager, and I knew he was this absolutely insane talent. That was one of the smartest things we ever did. He is an athlete you could build a brand around, and we have. I feel very fortunate in that Bob stepped into our lives. I mean, I, you know, just, just the, the amount of experience and knowledge that he had, and, and he showed me what it's like to be open-minded. Getting Bob was was pretty cool and unique and lucky experience. Dave called me up and said, we've got a chance to hire Bob. And my exact words were, if we don't hire him, it'll be the worst decision we ever make. He's got so much knowledge. I mean, just the stuff that he knows about ski shaping, modifying things, you know, anything from bevel work to whatever it is, he, he's just, he's one of the greats. Bob is obviously a, the best craftsman. There's no better 
water ski, hands-on guy than, than Bob LaPointe. We grew up on riding Maharajas back then. Yeah, everything was wood back then, and you could never get two wood skis to ski the same. They just didn't. So the very early fiberglass skis was, if I got the story right, it was Composite Structures company made it, and it was, I think Danny Kidder was involved in that, and Roger Teeter was involved in that, all who ended up, you know, EP skis and Kidder skis on it. And the first ones were made, I believe, through at Herb's factory. But they came out, they were basically, a, it was a knockoff of the wood ski, which had a real round bevel. And the thing was just, it was all over the place. So I said, oh, I got I to do something here. I was only like 17, 18, 17 years old. And I just took a file. I had, drank a couple cores and took a file to it. <laughs> Went out and skied on it. And I, that was the ski I was skied on in the Masters that year. It, <laughs> It, it worked, and that was kind of the start of my whole, yeah, you can really change change a ski, you know. It was fun to ski with the pub. Thanks, guys. Yeah. The main feeling is the 66, no matter how much I load it or unload it, I can control the rebound yes. of that pressure. Yeah. This is like off. giving back to the team. So the team puts a lot of hard work into helping create a ski like the Omega. As a benefit to that hard work, then Bob and myself and Marcus and Wade, Will and kind of the R&D team want to give back to the athletes. So we put them on the skis and we fine tune them for their particular style or needs at their hardest pass. And I think that's why you see a lot of syndicate skiers have a lot of success on the Pro Tour because uh, they have a guy like Bob Point watching them ski on their ski and helping adjust it such that it suits what they need. And that's unique. I don't, I, I think that's a special thing. I couldn't imagine doing this week without Bob and Wade. Wade's won the best events in the world. Bob's won the best events in the world. And they've done it multiple times in multiple situations with the best competition in the world. You cannot buy that experience. For me, it's special. I get, I get the same chills going, man, this is like, I got to build this thing, you know? It's fun because we got, you know, we got the whole gang here and they're just going boom, 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 one after another, testing the same stuff, so we're getting a, a really good consensus of where we're going. I grew up with a Wake Cox poster in my bedroom, you know, like, I still have those things, but then the way in which it's all very collaborative kind of puts it on, on the background. Uh, I mean, these guys all, they're all world champions, all st but they, like you said, they kind of check the ego at the door. But then I was on the dock with Benny today, and I think in the boat he was like, Bob, Wade, and Will, and he started counting shit, like seven world titles, how many masters, you know, like, you know, <laughs> and JT was getting ready to put his binding on to go ski. I'm like, wow. So that was my first big pro event in the U.S. I'd skied Moomba, 85, and then I got hurt, so I missed most 86. And then there's the 87 U.S. Open at Oak Healy, and I did all three events, and we slalom first. They, they didn't see this. It was just a shuffle draw. Yeah. And so I went... Out after you did the five at 39, and then Mappa was after me. And I was in high school, and I was standing there between these two guys. And I'm like, this is going to be really embarrassing. And, and I, I think I ran like three at 38. And my dad says to me, well, son, that's actually a lot better than I thought you were going to do. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. I'm like, that was just miserable. Yeah. The collaboration is huge. And, and having that kind of energy when you get all those kind of like legends together. It fires you up. You got Rob, who I don't think even remembers skiing on a perfect pass. And you got Bob, that maybe kind of stopped skiing when perfect pass was coming around. I, th I think it adds a lot of value, you know? I think the reason Rob Hazelwood's fired up to ski at 8 a.m. is because Bob LaPointe's going to ride in the boat and Wade Cox is driving. I tell you what, he's going to find another gear and give it a go. It's really cool seeing the uh, the energy of, of Rob, you know, being a young kid, how much he's been skiing. <laughs> Pretty sore right now. <laughs> this is my 11th set. So, yeah, it's, it's getting pretty sore, but while I'm here, Bob's here, Will's here, John's here, the whole team's here. I've got to take advantage of it while I can. That's been pretty cool. He's just a, seemed like a really passionate, uh, hungry skier. When the point's in the boat, you're like, oh, I better bow up. You know what I mean? They, you know, we're sharing information. We're, we're, we're working together as a team to get, to get the ski better so that everybody can be better. Wade and, and Bob and, and Will kind of set that precedence that like, hey, this is a group effort. So they're competitive individually, but they're kind of all collectively doing it for the, good, the better good. There again, I don't think that would, would have been typical 15, 20 years ago. Everybody kind of was 
on their own program. I see it. Like basically, we're, we're out here at the lake and we're skiing on everybody's ski. Basically, we're trying everybody's settings and we're making the whole thing move in one unit. That's a unique thing and it's a rare moment. I think we got to like savor that. And I'm just like fortunate to like help be in, be in that. And I think it's motivating. I know like for me, you know, you run a business, it's kind of not sexy. It's a lot of tough times, but it's like these times that make it worth it. You know, I think this is like what it's all about. You better get him back. You gotta keep if you keep letting him do that to you, you ah, what just happened? Well, I took my shorts in, because I'm the rookie apparently. Hey. He made a fatal mistake. He said, I have one, one pair of dry shorts left. Oh, oh no, I'm gonna get another pair. Oh. <laughs> Be good. Without Dave, we don't have any of this, right? Um, uh, he, he provides, he, he you know, allows us and provides us the stuff we need to do this kind of thing, which is kind of unusual in the industry, I think. It's neat how Dave just kind of sits back a little bit as well and lets you go out and, and experiment and try things. To actually get the ski on something you like sort of dreamed about is unique. And here at HO, it actually happens. Like Dave be like, what do you think? And I'd be like, well, I think, you know, maybe we need to go a bit like this with our tail or we need to do this with the flex and he'll go out and build something and then we try it. And then we're able to kind of go back to Dave and, and tell him what we're feeling, but he's just, it just seems like with Dave, whatever you need, he's there to get you what you want to try. Uh, it's not one man show that this is the ski, you ride it, you like it great, you don't like it, so be it. It's, it's this is what we can do uh, let let let's build it together. Every set, every pass, there's a lesson to be learned, you know. And I really learned that in the last couple of years, um, just to sh shut up and listen to what they say, because they're usually right. I mean, they're the astronauts at the forefront of the sport. They're out pushing the limits of what's possible on a ski, and their whole life is about riding that carbon wafer. You know what I mean? So to ignore their nuanced feel would be absurd. And I think there is a trend in the industry to say oh yeah that's just that's oh he's he can ski on anything or you know he, he's such a unique case no not really i mean they yeah they can ski on almost anything but their their feel is like tuned into a new level and just listen to that and then try and work with them to build off of it sound gardens on cup number three of coffee that's like two yeah it's a half how are we doing so far it's fun yeah. we're getting the baseline everyone's riding their baseline Feeling out the ridge. The coolest thing for me right now at the moment is looking at my brother who's been through, I don't know, he's been through quite a bit in the last year and a half, hanging out with the legend Wade. Warm, fuzzy, goosebump y feeling. Go on. Hey. It's kind of an exciting time to have an idea, work through it, test it out. It was a few years ago I said to Dave, He said, I need 10 more of me. Which, which there's only one Will Asher. Does that make sense? Because I, I used to ski so much. I used to test so much. But there's other guys that can ski, maybe not to the extent he skis, but that can feel similar things. And then we can chop away at, at something way faster because you have four bodies. So, so suddenly you can take 30 sets in two days. I think that's been developed. You know, we've got John and Benny and Rob's here for the first time. We've got CP, we've got Nick Adams. And the girls, you know, yeah, Allie, Jamie, like the team is growing and these are all people that can really ski really well. Nothing was running on you. Yeah. You were over everything. I mean, five at 39 was a big test for me because yeah, I, I was like late, flat, yeah. I'm, I'm just not going to rotate. The picture coming in, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just end up wheeling here and it doesn't make getting sense. five. Yeah, but it didn't. It like dropped in yeah. and continued around. So it was cool. Yeah, it's nice. That's why we try random shit, right? Yep. Question everything. Yep. I watch. I can. I can see, but they're. This, you know, I can't really do it anymore like they can. So I'm, I'm counting on them for the feedback, and they've all actually evolved in that way. Uh, as an example, Will, when we first started working together in 2008, he'd go out on ski A and then ski on ski B, and then I'd say, "How to feel?" And he'd say, "Different." basically <laughs> that's in my eyes is the hardest part about the whole design is yeah. is how do you transfer what you feel under your feet into a design and that's got to go through words he has evolved to probably being the in my mind the best tester in the world uh, he, he has such unique feel you know he can feel every part of the ski and, and 
and tell me exactly what's happening, not, you know, under the front foot, under the back foot, what the tail's doing. It's, it's really uh, exceptional. To listen to, to someone like Will or to listen to someone like John when we get to ski together um, has definitely helped me put in better words what I feel. I think that's rubbed off on some of the other guys, like, like you know, because they also, they ski together. You got JT and Benny and, and all of them. They just, they've gotten into that. They've, they've taken it and run with it, and they've, they're all getting really good at testing. You can learn so much from this. If you, if you kind of, not only with your own scheme, but if you hear what other guys are saying and the feedback they're kind of openly giving as well, this whole thing is such a really cool learning process. This morning, after you had breakfast, CP came to me, and I mean, you realize CP has been in this game you know, for a long time. Like, he's been in water skiing for a long time. He's been on different skis at different times in his career. And then he looked at me after breakfast, he goes, man, I am just, I am so blessed and, and just honored to be on this part of this team, man. This team is just, there's no drama. Everybody works together. Uh, we just have such a great brand and team, and um, it's kind of mind-blowing, actually. And in my little mind is like, well, like you, you got the name, the scores, like you get Chris Parrish, like you can do whatever you want. But for him to like sort of like go like, I'm, there's something going on here and I'm stoked and lucky to be part of it. I'm like, okay, well then, then, yeah. Like not that I didn't know it before, but that's like further confirmation, you know? First set on the 68 Omega. Felt awesome. Good boat crew. Mateo, I just thought about both things there, like what you guys both said. Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. But at least now you have control throughout the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. MD, this lake is sick. You know, it's my first time skiing the lake too, so yeah. that was awesome. He's got an eye that's just incredible on little refined movements. That's where I think uh, Wade really stands out. I mean, he, he, he hasn't skied in a long time, but even with zero off and some of the new movements, he's just, he has such a good eye for what he sees to make you, you know, ski more efficiently. Maybe we can enlighten this younger group and, and they can overcome some of the obstacles that we had by just using on, you know, our, our experience. Like, oh man, I think you might wanna really try this, you know? We can capitalize on things they've learned or mistakes they've made in the past. People say, well, what if we try this? But they also can take their ego out of it and they'll let us go down a path even if they're like, well, yeah, we tried that 20, you know. They're like, man, I tried that in like 86 and it didn't go well. They'll still let us go. He's done everything I've ever wanted to try on a slalom ski and more. If the uh, ski gets stiffer here, it does this. If it, you change the rocker here, you know, we, we went through all of that. So instead of spending two months trying something, you spend maybe a day and you try the best version of that thing. And then at the end when we're wrong, <laughs> And they're usually like, yeah, I told you so. And, and all that knowledge is just, most of it's still <laughs> still in here. So there's certain things you know work and certain things you, you know don't work. I mean, I still have a long way to go, but I, I, I'm really glad I'm, I'm a part of it. And for me, it's really interesting. It's really fulfilling. There's two things that I make fun of. Well, one of them's R&D, which you don't want to be research and duplicate, right? And then the, the other sort of old saying, well, if you can't beat it, copy it. You know, what we don't do either. I don't know much about business or selling skis. That's, that's Dave's side of the story. Yeah. It doesn't interest me that much to sell skis, but um, it doesn't sound like we're taking the most conservative approach. We very easily could have taken an A1 and just iterated the design a little bit. Sand the bevel a little bit and, 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 and change the, the top graphic and call it a new ski. Every year for a decade. And honestly, we probably would have sold just as many skis but the team wasn't satisfied with that. That's not interesting. That, to me, that's not fulfilling. That's, that's just boring. It really is. Because it's really young, but the, the life of us being able to do this is really short. And I think of the stuff that we've experienced over the last 14 years as far as different products and directions that we've kind of let each other down. We had some successes. We had some failures. We learned from all of them, but I don't think you would have a ski like Omega had you not gone on that journey. We want Will to win the Masters. We want Jamie Bull to set the collegiate record, which he did today.
That's what we want. We want to win the tournament. We want to give the skier this unbridled opportunity to, 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 to be the best. Sometimes you're playing a game without reading the rules, and you think you're playing it right. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Oh. I literally thought that was going to turn the head at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> he is shitting his oh. pants. Oh. And that's like, oh, oh. It makes right. sense. It all makes sense. Oh, hey! <laughs> There's a dart like, in my head. Makes it funny. What Americans. Get? And then you, you maybe open another box and you find a different set of rules. Oh! Yeah! No. Buddy. <laughs> Did you just take my bullseye out? Yeah. No, it was outer rim. Like, Did you just like, take my bullseye out? It was out outer rim. And now that's the game you're playing and it's way more enjoyable. This team, it's almost like it plays to a different set of rules. When you experience it, your horizons change, questions the way you think, and it takes you down a different path. And that's that's what's valuable about, about this program. And it's, yeah, I couldn't imagine being with a different company that didn't see the value in that. And if you're just sort of worried about sales, you know. If you want to become Bob, you know, like this guy who has the knowledge, you've got to do some shit that doesn't work. Had we taken step one of iterating from where, from what we had, you wouldn't have this group of people. You wouldn't have tracked Benny. You wouldn't have tracked a Mateo. Those guys are, they, they are hungry to figure it out. And they're great skiers, they could ski for anyway, but they ski for us because, because of that. Lettuce wrapped in and out burger, there's yeah, a name for it. Protein style. That's what it's called? Yeah. Okay, there it is, protein style. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, turn the buoy. Yes, see. <laughs> Should I do it again? Yeah. Yes, see. Bob turned around. <laughs> he got up and turned around. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Dude, we're, we're coming unglued. The CP is coming apart at the seams, I think. Look at Will over here. He's, uh, he's done with us. I don't blame him. What are you getting ready to do? I'm, I'm going to go ski. ski. I can't handle these guys on the dock anymore. Uh, right there. On the back. Hey, I'm not lying to you. I don't like how you're challenging me to ski. Yeah, Mateo's not that motivated to ski today. Yeah. I'm tired. I said board shorts, handle, life jacket, <laughs> some ski equipment. <laughs> Let's get it done. I've been trying hey. for three hours to get him on the water. <laughs> no. It's too You're cold for you. It's, it's too much thing. fun to stroke the beard. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I, I feel like you got to keep keep pushing yourself. Like you can just see the the hunger in a lot of these skiers here, even on the team, that they're that they're hungry to get better and and keep pushing themselves too. So you're like, man, I gotta. I, I gotta do the same, I gotta, I gotta keep it going. It's pretty cool. I mean, they're our friends now. Like, we've gone on this journey together, and through that process, you know, we just form a bond. Like, it's more than business at this point. Like, that's our that's our crew who we hang out with, and that's what's kept me on HL this long, to be honest. Like, cause there's a lot of cool business opportunities in the world, but it's hard to kind of like, I really enjoy that camaraderie or that crew to work and ski with. I feel lucky to be doing this. Um, it's, it's it's still my passion, the sport's my passion, and this is how I can contribute to it, is by by lending my, if you will, my knowledge over the, that I amassed over the years and, and passing it on to these guys. You know, that's kind of, that's my role, I think. And, uh, it's, it's, it's fun to watch him. Bob cares, man. He would, he would drive two and a half hours down here from Truckee to ride the boat and watch Rob Hazelwood try a different bevel package. He still loves it. He's into it. He wants to figure it out. So that's the fuel that keeps it going. It's like everybody's on the dock. We're all sharing information. We're all we're all working together. And it's crazy. It's an individual sport, but it's just like everybody's just been so open to see everybody get better. We've been fortunate enough to hold this whole thing together. And I think that's because everybody here is really passionate and has a collective goal of trying to push water skiing forward and to figure out if it's possible to go a little bit further for these high-end guys or really to help the average skier improve because we all know once you reach a point in tournament water skiing or solid course skiing in general, it's tough. Progress slows down and we are really trying to create that product to help you break through. You get to a level and you go, okay, what's holding me back? Like I tell the guys, I, I can't promise we'll always have the best water ski in the world, but I promise we'll always be working our ass off to build it. It's just like what happened at the Malibu for Willie, you know? He goes out and dominates and 
you know, I got all the goosebumps and, you know, I'm in another state. And, and I, that's six Malibus and five Masters for Willie, you know, and that's, I count them, they're all my championships. You know, every time he wins, when you won your US Open, it was like, hey man, that's my victory, you know, it means that much.